From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Ippy Presents. You know, oftentimes when we come to the end of our program and the time is gone, I say, ooh, I didn't quite get to that headline that I promised them, so I'm including a couple right now. And more costs may top $3.7 trillion, not billion, trillion dollars. And Iran's nuclear war preparations must be stopped before it's too late. And we're going to be discussing all of those headlines, the Lord willing, and much, much more. You know, we can have peace in a troubled world. You can have peace. And if you don't, before this program is over, we want to show you how that in spite of what you're reading in the newspapers, you can have peace in your heart. Well, before we get into the headlines, I'd like to explain something that a lot of people are confused about. You heard those two words, rapture, Revelation, uh, two events pointing to the return of our wonderful Lord. He said, if I go away, I'm coming again. Two events, seven years apart, Jack. Will you explain them, please? The rapture is not the second coming of Christ. Many Christians have confused others by saying that is the second coming. No, the first coming was to earth. The second coming must be to earth. The rapture is not a coming to earth. It's a calling us home to heaven for the marriage to the Lamb, Christ, as the church is his bride, Revelation 19, 7. And then the bride returns with Christ for the second coming to earth. Now look at the rapture. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with the dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Where did they meet? In the air. That's not the second coming. Seven years later, after that marriage, when he returns to the earth, we find in Revelation 19, verse 11, that he comes regally, royally, majestically in that white horse. The armies in heaven are with him, verse 14. And he comes as the king of the kings and lord of the lords. That's to earth because you don't have kings in heaven unless they're safe kings who have no authority there. And he reigns over them for 1,000 years, the kings and all the inhabitants who are left behind after Armageddon, for that's not the end of the world. And a thousand years, Revelation 20, verse 4, yes, but then he's recommissioned, as I said last week, in 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28, and he rules forever on earth, terra firma. The second coming is here. Revelation 11, 15, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ and he shall reign over the kingdoms and the earth forever and forever and forever. Now it's changed because a thousand years is finished and it's become eternal. And oh, what a world it's going to be. And you know, you guys that don't believe in the rapture have a real problem. Why? What are you going to do concerning the resurrection? All the church creeds believe it. John 5, 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, which all who are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, salvation, eternal existence with God. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation, eternal loss, eternal hell. Now, why do you have a problem? All right, we see that the dead are going to rise. But what about the living? There's nothing in the resurrection of the dead in the Bible that includes the living unless you believe in the rapture. And there it says the dead rise first and then we are alive and remain are caught up with him. You can't get a complete resurrection of all believers unless you got the dead and living and you got to have the rapture to have that, Rexella. And when he comes to earth, it's called the revelation. He's revealing to 
all the world. He cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, Revelation 1, 7. Jack, I just want to say one thing here. In the rapture, when Christians go home to be with the Lord, something's going to happen. And I want to say Jack Van Impey is going to receive a great reward. That's when the rewards are given out for what we did for the Lord. The unsaved are not there. They won't. Get, that's not it at all. The Christians are there. We stand before the Lord. Jack, you're going to receive a great reward when you stand before the Lord. Oh, thank You've been you, honey. so very, thank very, you, very honey. faithful. Well, there are going to be two groups there, Rexel, yes. those who are confident and those who are ashamed. First yes. John 2:28. So get to busy for the Lord because He's coming soon, and you have to give an account of your life. Second Corinthians 5:10. You won't have to be ashamed, Jack. No. I'll tell you. Well, now where are these signs found in the Bible, Jack? Here, the Walking Bible. Where are the signs found? in the Bible. Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapters 17 and 21, and get ready for a shock, the book of Revelation, all of it. Ah, that's poppycock. If you don't believe in the book of Revelation, then throw out the four Gospels and all the things Jesus said. What? That's right. Last year, I proved that every sign that Jesus said is found in the book of Revelation. All 21 of them. Why? Because Revelation 22, 16 has Jesus speaking. He says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you in the churches these things, these 22 chapters. And man, if you mock the book of Revelation, you're in trouble with God. For Jesus, through his spirit, went on to say in verse 18, I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add to the things that are in this book, I'll add to him the plagues and judgments that are written in the book. And if any man take away from the book of the words of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things written in this book. Take away his part out of the book of life? That's what it says. Beware. Don't add or subtract from the word of God. Old Testament as well, Deuteronomy 4, 2. That's our goal. We want to be approved by the Lord when we see him, don't we? Oh, I love this offer. It is the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. Please take a look at the promo right now. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Van Impey Ministries. Dr. Van Impey has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Van Impey used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of Scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Van Epi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed, Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. Oh, please make the call or write to us. What a great Christmas gift. What a great wedding gift. I've given them up for weddings. Or just uh, to somebody that you're burdened for, maybe they're going through something. The Holy Bible, Jack's Prophecy Bible. So much in here. Please make the call and we'll get it to you as soon as possible. And now friends, here is another huge sign pointing to the Lord's return. Oh my, oh my. And we have no confusion about this. Wars cost, and that is for Iraq and Afghanistan, may top $3.7 trillion. Obama insists U.S. does not fear China. We're going to go a little fast here. Obama beefs up military near rising China. U.S. to build up military in Australia. Going on the week, going nuclear. Can Iran's work on a bomb be stopped? Weapons of mass corruption instead of destruction. Iran accused of nuclear arms plans. And the Prime Minister of Israel, international community, must stop Iranian nuclear program. And U.S. plans bomb sales in the Gulf to counter Iran. 
United Nations nuclear watchdog to soften Iran resolution as gesture to China and Russia. And China, Russia resist sanctions ah, against Iran. And here you see another one. Saudis eye Pakistani nukes to face Iran. All right, we're saying we're afraid. Pakistan's nuclear weapons vulnerable to theft. Now, this is a report. It's time for Israel to destroy Iran's nuclear reactor. And Iran threatens to hit back with iron fists to any Israeli or U.S. attack. Now, I'm going to go on very, very quickly here. Is this war, a uh, war internationally, is that a sign pointing to the return of the Lord? Oh, it really is, Rexella. Jesus said there should be wars and rumors of wars in Matthew chapter uh, 24, verses uh, 6 and 7. He said it again in Mark chapter 13, verses 7 and 8. And then in Luke 21, 9, he says, when you hear of wars and commotions, wars and terrorism, wars and revolutionaries, be not afraid, these things must first come. Before what? When you see them beginning and they're here and now, he said, then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to happen, look up your redemption of the body. Romans 8, 23 is nigh the rapture when he says, come up hither. And then he goes on to say in verse 31, when you see the signs really coming full blast into view, you know my kingdom that returned to earth with my bride is right at the door. In fact, it's when you see these things that this generation that lives to see them shall not pass away. We are that generation. And that's verse 32 of that chapter. Plus, we got Ezekiel's chapters 38 and 39, Revelation 16, 12, chapter 9, verses 14 to 18, and many other texts. Yes, this Bible predicts that Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16, is coming. And it's not going to be a picnic. Jack, according to these headlines... Is he telling us that the world is really in danger? Are we really in danger, Jim? Well, I'm going to take the secular voices of the entire globe who are warning us what's coming. You've heard many of the headlines right now. First of all, there is Russia, Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39, Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, Rosh, says in Russia today, Ezekiel 38 verses 1 and 2, who fights the war of the latter years and latter days, and they have just signed a contract for Eurasia. They said, we're not happy since we broke up as the USSR. We want to become a great empire again. And they're planning to get that entire Muslim world, that part that was with them before, with them once again for the war of wars, Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16. Then there's China. Oh, our president says, we're not in fear, aren't we? He just went to Australia and signed a contract to put troops there, station them in the future to be ready for China. That's Revelation 16, 12, the kings of the east, the Orient coming down. And by the way, they come across the Euphrates River. The great war is in that area, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, and this uprising that's going on. It's not a democracy. Sharia law of the Islamites says that they cannot have a democracy. It is contrary to Sharia law. This is all put on what's going on. They're not going to become democratic. Brotherhood is now trying to take over, and they are dangerous to America, dangerous to Israel. And here is Iran getting ready with the bomb, and he, if he gets it, he's going to use it. And they were now worried about Pakistan because he could get the bomb from them and let it loose across the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the world's leaders are crying out to do something about Iran before it's too late. But the Bible says an atomic war is coming. Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, chapter 39, verse 6, Joel chapter 2, verses 2, 3 and 30, Zephaniah 1, 18, Malachi 4, 1, Revelation 8, 7, and Revelation 9, 18. By these three was the third part of men killed, fire, smoke, brimstone, atomic warfare. Oh, God, save America. Help us, God. Oh, yes. Well, the Bible is very clear about war pointing to the return of the Lord. Here's another big one pointing to the return of the Lord. Famine. 
imperiled millions. And Somalia famine. United Nation warns of 750,000 deaths. Now, the food is there, but the radicals will not let it in. The terrorists say, no, they can't have it. Now, Jack, is famine another yes, sign? Yes, it is. And that's al Sabab, the terrorist organization just formed in that area. And they're going to let 750,000 of their Muslim brothers die because they're of their greed. They want money for all of this and stopping what's going on. And Jesus spoke about that in Matthew 24, verse 7, and Luke 21, 11, when he said, there shall be famines. And pestilences, oh my word. Take a look at this one, if you will, dangerous TB spreading at alarming rate in Europe. And strides in biodefense follow, anthrax scare. Now there's an awful lot of pestilence out there worldwide. Is that a sign, 25 Jack? new diseases in the last 25 years caused by the beasts of the field. And that is what Jesus spoke about because he was behind the writing of the book of Revelation. And in Revelation 6, verses 7 and 8, one-fourth of the population dies through sword, hunger, death, and the beasts of the field. Oh, you know, Jack, I wish that we had more time even today because I have several more signs I'd like to work in. But we'll do it next week for you. But before we conclude our program today, remember I said you could have peace in a troubled world? You can have peace, but only if the Prince of Peace is in your heart. You want to be ready for the coming of the Lord, forgiven of anything in your life you don't want there? The Lord will forgive you. Jack, would you give a wonderful invitation right now? Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and he made peace through the blood of his cross. Colossians 1.20, look at me. Calm our hearts as we pray. But pray this after me, and he'll save you right now this moment, Lord Jesus, Savior of the world. Oh, how you loved us, suffered for us, and died in our place for our sins. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Today I ask you to come into my heart and be my Savior. Your coming is so near, and I want to be ready. Jesus, save me. In your name I pray this. Amen. Amen. You know, I will never forget, I say this often, the day I prayed that prayer. There were some things in my life that I knew God was displeased with, and all I had to do was say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me, and come into my heart, be my Savior. Did you pray that prayer? Be my Savior, asking the Lord to come in. I trust that you did, and if you did, write to me. You know, the drugs can be gone. The alcohol addiction can be gone. The Lord will help you to overcome anything that you don't want there. Well, if you write to me, I'll send you this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. You want to walk that new direction? Jesus wants to walk with you. He'll give you peace no matter what you've done, knowing that you've been forgiven, and the Lord will give you a new life in Him. How wonderful to walk with Him. And now... I just want you to know that everything we've been talking about today, as I said before, is here in our wonderful offer of the week, the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. And here is our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Don't put it off. Christmas is around the corner. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order your Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Van Appy Ministries, Box 704, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Van Appy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck. And don't put it off. Make the call or write right away. One of the greatest gifts that you could give at any time of the year. And you know, friends, sometimes we think about the Lord and we think, oh, I don't need to be forgiven. This is a very good saying to remember. The first step in receiving God's forgiveness is to admit that we need it. 
We'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.